Hello, this is a in the field review of the Nikon 200-500 f5.6 VR lens. We've been asked by some of our viewers to do a review of this lens. Um, basically this is my go-to wildlife lens. I do shoot with the 300 2.8 but this is probably my favourite all-rounder. Um, Gemma shoots with the Sigma 150-600 Contemporary. They do a sports version as well and there's also a Tamron G1 and G2 version 150-600. I did actually own the Tamron G1, the first version of the 150-600. Um, fine lens, nothing wrong with it at all. But I was drawn to this lens um, by reviews and seeing some people that I knew, knew who used the lens and I don't regret the decision at all. I've had this over two years now, this lens, it's been with me everywhere um, and in my opinion it's Nikon's steel of a lens, I mean it's it's a bargain for what it costs. Uh, it's, you can get it now for about a thousand pound UK, I don't know what that is in dollars, but for the price, the fact that it's a Nikon lens, so it's fully compatible with the, all the bodies, you have no issues with that, it is an absolute bargain in my opinion. It isn't a heavy lens, I mean it weighs 2.3, just under 2.3 kilos, which is not, it's, it's hand holdable, that was another reason why I went for this lens over the Sigma Sport, because I know the Sigma Sport was heavy but it's, it wasn't supposed to be balanced as well this is nicely balanced when I zoomed out um, so it's hand holdable I do use it on the tripod mainly only for videoing really um, you can walk about with it I can walk about with it all day long so it's just over two just under 2.3 kilos um, the other great points about this is it's the only constant aperture variable zoom lens of this sort of focal length 500 mil uh, like I said it is a hundred mil short of the other lenses but in in the field I don't really notice the difference I'd rather have the constant aperture of f5.6 um, close focusing distance as well is a big plus with this lens at 2.2 meters so it, I have got some um, very pleasing macro shots what is what is your close focus and gem? So, oh, just over three meters. Oh, okay. So right, yeah, on it's the a lot closer. That Gemma uses it's three meters. Like I said, I have got some, which I'll put on the screen now. Um, some not macro, as in one to one life size, but I don't. I'm not into that. I just like the close focusing. You can get dragonflies, um, anything you want to close focus on, really butterflies. Um, so it's great for that. If I now, it's not weather sealed. Nikon says it's not weather sealed. It isn't weather sealed. No externally zooming lens will be weather sealed, obviously, because as soon as you get any water on here and zoom back in, you're going to be bringing the, the water in. So um, it, it's not weather sealed. Having said that, I have used it in varying weather conditions, the cold, the rain, the mist never had an issue with it never stopped working it's never locked up so unless you put it leave it out in the shower it's it's perfectly good enough for the weather um i do have a cover on i've taken half of it off so we can see the switches it's a camo cover just to protect it a bit and to make it more comfortable when it's cold um it gives it a more of a degree of waterproofing but it doesn't really when you zoom it out because the barrel's not covered but it's just nicer to hold with a cover on. You've got a you've got a Velcro. I have uh, yeah, I have actually got a Velcro. Um, don't think that's in my bag. I have actually got a Velcro cover for this part of the zoom. Neuro Obviously, once you put that on, you're then stuck at 500 mil until you take the Velcro cover off. But having said that, like all wildlife photographers know, you tend to shoot 90, 95 percent at your longest range. So this basically is used at 500 mil 95% of the time. 
this is where this lens shines as well a lot of the other lenses I don't think they're correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think they are as sharp at 600 mil this lens is tack sharp at 500 mil wide open at 5.6 which is how I shoot it wide open 95% of the time um, it gives you confidence to shoot like that as we know anything just to help in low light um, matters and that's another reason why only half a stop I know between 5.6 and 6.3 compared to the other lenses but every little helps it has the silent oh the sun has just come <laughs> shining right oh we have gotta to... stop we gotta get some wildlife <laughs> <laughs> it has that's all right we are we are looking that way Gemma is filming me but feverishly looking that way just in <laughs> case the barneys come out um, while we were standing here we thought we'd do this um, it has a this is a Nikon AF-S motor silent wave motor so it will work on any camera body that Nikon does um, the lower end ones without the um, built-in motor or right up to the D850 which is what I shoot it on it's a full frame lens which means it will also be absolutely fine on a DX crop sensor body Gemma shoots it on she borrows it sometimes off me and shoots it when I let her have it when I'm shooting with my 300 what she she often borrows this and puts it on her D500 amazing occasionally amazing combination with the d500 because then equivalent you're getting 700 uh, mil 700 700 mil um yeah it's it's a beautiful lens on full frame or crop sensor bodies it has a full-time manual override ring so at any time um you can take manual control of the focus just by turning the ring there's you don't have to flick any other switches because of the manual automatic or manual mode leave it in m slash a and at any time you can just override the autofocus by turning the ring which is a very useful feature i do actually use this with a teleconverter not very often um and i'd only use it with my 1.4 times nikon teleconverter it works absolutely fine obviously it then turns into a 700 mil f eight lens but the d850 the d500 the d5 the top the higher end of the nikon cameras have no problem focusing at all at f8 you are restricted to i think the center points more of the center points of the autofocus array the spread you can't go as wide but the only difference i notice really is a slight dip in the autofocus performance things are a little bit slower depending on the light well yeah because you're shooting at f8 so yeah. you you need you need good light to have it on this brings me to the autofocus performance of the lens without the teleconverter on it's absolutely fine it's not as quick at acquiring focus um snapping into focus as my 300 mil 2.8 but then you're talking about a lens which costs three or four times as much so you have to expect compromises on a normal day-to-day -day basis so the autofocus performance is absolutely fine i never had any issues it doesn't hunt whereas i can remember with my tamron lens i had the g1 um, it did hunt on occasion um, i can remember that and that was one of the reasons why i i flipped to this never had a problem with hunting with this at all it just it, it when you when you go between the 300 2.8 to this you you do notice a difference but it's like anything if you've never shot with a, a fast prime nikon lens you you'd be more than happy with the autofocus performance which i am and i know you are Gemma. when you use it you've never complained about the autofocus it's not it? a huge difference between mine and that no one, but no. i mean the only difference i can think could be a fractionally cleaner stop. Yeah, it's a the, half a stop the image is fractionally cleaner. difference between mine and Gemma's and that and as you know the autofocus system relies on the maximum aperture of the lens. So that's why the primes, the 2.8, will always focus faster because they've they've got in that instance four times as much light coming into the autofocus sensor. But but autofocus performance is absolutely fine. The VR performance, because this has VR, is 
really good. Nikon claim um, 4.5 stops of VR. Now, like most lens manufacturers, they always tend to over-exaggerate a bit, in my experience. But I have shot this at 1 100th of a second at 500mm, and I've got tack sharp images, handheld. Um, the VR works absolutely great. Um, never had an issue with it at all. You've just got VR on and VR off. You've also got a normal and a sport mode, um, a switch on here. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying the normal mode works normally. The sport mode they recommend you use, I think when you're on like a moving platform, like if you were on a boat um, and you were moving or an aeroplane or anything that's moving, I think they recommend you put it in sport mode. I must admit, I shoot it all the time in normal mode and never had a problem with it at all uh, the only downside to this lens well actually i can only really think of one thing that i didn't like about this lens and i still don't that's why i've made a slight modification the tripod foot is not very good in my opinion certainly um tamron my 70 to 200 f 2.8 tamron lens the g2 version the tripod foot is a built-in arca swiss has a built-in Arca Swiss mount, which I think is absolutely a brilliant idea. It saves you messing around with plates because the plate, um, if Gemma comes in closer, I have modified this. I'll put a longer plate on it um, and put and drilled a hole in the tripod foot and put a bolt, nut and bolt through. So I've got a longer plate. That also helps with carrying the lens about. I like it, it's more of a handle to, as you know, you should never, you should never hold the the um, camera by the camera when you've got a long lens on you should always hold it by the lens or by the lens foot the tripod foot so having the longer tripod foot on let me just show you when i take that off um, it just makes it easier to carry um, i just drilled an extra hole in the bottom um, and put a plate on the that's the other thing i don't like i'm now going to make a right Horlicks of putting that back on. No, I haven't. The only other thing I don't like, um, the it's not particularly smooth when you're turning it from landscape to portrait orientation. I mean, it's, it's fine, it's good enough, but certainly when I compare it to my 300mm 2.8, which is which is lovely to turn, but again, compromises on a lens which costs at least a third of the price. All in all, then. A cracking lens, a lens that I have used for years, been never, I've never complained about it. In fact, I, I, Gemma will tell you I'm the first. We need to go to complain about things. Barney's the out. Barn owl is out. Yes. What timing? So, <laughs> in other words, buy it. Great lens, and uh, hope you enjoyed that quick review. Thank you.